Pollution of the Ganges or Ganga, the largest river in India, poses significant threats to human health and the larger environment. Severely polluted with human waste and industrial contaminants, the river provides water to about 40% of India's population across 11 states, serving an estimated population of 500 million people or more, more than any other river in the world. Today, the Ganges is considered to be the sixth most polluted river in the world. Raghabir Singh, an Indian photographer, has noted that no one in India spoke of the Ganges as polluted until the late 1970s. However, pollution has been an old and continuous process in the river as by the time people were finally speaking of the Ganges as polluted, stretches of over 600 kilometers were essentially ecologically dead zones. A number of initiatives have been undertaken to clean the river but failed to deliver as desired results. After getting elected, India's Prime Minister Narendra Modi affirmed to work in cleaning the river and controlling pollution. Subsequently, the Namami Gange project was announced by the government in the July 2014 budget. An estimated 2,958 crore rupees $460 million have been spent until July 2016 in various efforts in cleaning up of the river. Topic. Causes The main cause of water pollution in the Ganga River are the increase in the population density, various human activities such as bathing, washing clothes, the bathing of animals, and dumping of various harmful industrial waste into the rivers. Topic. Human waste The river flows through 30 cities with populations over 100,000, 23 cities with populations between 50,000 and 100,000, and about 48 towns. A large proportion of the sewage water with higher organic load in the Ganga is from this population through domestic water usage. Topic. Industrial waste Because of the establishment of a large number of industrial cities on the bank of the Ganga like Kanpur, Prayagraj, Varanasi and Patna, countless tanneries, chemical plants, textile mills, distilleries, slaughterhouses, and hospitals prosper and grow along this and contribute to the pollution of the Ganga by dumping untreated waste into it. One coal-based power plant on the banks of the Pandu River, a Ganga tributary near the city of Kanpur, burns 600,000 tons of coal each year and produces 210,000 tons of fly ash. The ash is dumped into ponds from which a slurry is filtered, mixed with domestic wastewater, and then released into the Pandu River. Fly ash contains toxic heavy metals such as lead and copper. The amount of parts per million of copper released in the Pandu before it even reaches the gang is a thousand times higher than in uncontaminated water. Industrial effluents are about 12% of the total volume of effluent reaching the Ganga. Although a relatively low proportion, they are a cause for major concern because they are often toxic and non-biodegradable. Topic: Religious traditions. During festival seasons, over 70 million people bath in the Ganga to clean themselves from their past sins. Some materials like food, waste or leaves are left in the Ganga which are responsible for its pollution. Traditional beliefs hold that being cremated on its banks and to float down the Ganga will atone for the sins of those who die and carry them directly to salvation. In Varanasi alone, an estimated 40,000 bodies are cremated every year, many of which are only half burnt. Topic. Dams and pumping stations Built in 1854 during the British colonization of India, the Haridwar Dam has led to decay of the Ganges by greatly diminishing the flow of the river. The Faraka Barrage was built originally to divert fresh water into the Hooghly River but has since caused an increase of salinity in the downstream of the Ganges, having a damaging effect on the ground water and soil along the river. The barrage has caused major tension between Bangladesh and India. 
Bangladesh is actively considering to construct Ganges Barrage project for mitigating the salinity problem. The Government of India has planned about 300 dams on the Ganges and its tributaries in the near future despite a government-commissioned Green Panel report that has recommended scrapping 34 of the dams citing environmental concerns. Three more barrages across the Ganges main river are existing at Bainor, Narora and Kanpur. The barrages at Bainor and Narora divert all the water including base flows during dry season to the canals for irrigating vast area up to Allahabad city. Most of the water available at the upstream of the Kanpur barrage is used during dry season for the city's drinking water needs. Downstream of Kanpur barrage, adequate water is not available from the barrage to dilute the polluted water reaching the main river during the dry seasons of year. There are a number of pumping stations located on the banks right and left of the Ganges downstream of Kanpur barrage serving the irrigation requirements of huge area. These large pump houses are located at Rukunpur 26 degrees 10 minutes 21 seconds north 80 degrees 38 minutes 57 seconds east, Kanjali Kachar 25 degrees 17 minutes 37 seconds north 82 degrees 13 minutes 15 seconds east, Hakanapur Kailan 25 degrees 12 minutes 57 seconds north 83 degrees 01 15 E, Bosawali 25 degrees 20 minutes 46 seconds north 83 degrees 10 minutes 11 seconds east, Shekpur 25 degrees 32 minutes 13 seconds north 83 degrees 11 minutes 57 seconds east, Chochikpur 25 degrees 28 minutes 55 seconds north 83 degrees 25 minutes 11 seconds east, Lamui 25 degrees 23 minutes 20 seconds north 83 degrees 32 minutes 11 seconds east, Chausa 25 degrees 31 minutes 11 seconds north 83 degrees 54 04 E, etc. refer to Google Earth Maps. These lift irrigation schemes are pumping out most of the base flows available in the main river downstream of Kanpur city. To make the Ganges live, flowing and dilute the polluted water inflows from habitations and industries, at least 5,000 cusex flow is required from Narora to Faraka as minimum environmental flow during the eight months dry season. This is possible by constructing storage reservoirs of capacity 100 TM CFT across the Ganges tributaries located upstream of Narora city and reserving the stored water only for minimum environmental flows. In addition, a series of cascading barrage cum bridges are to be constructed across the river from Kanpur to Allahabad to increase the surface area of impounded polluted water in the river so that it serves as vast natural oxidation ponds. The accumulated sediments, sludge would get washed away during the annual monsoon floods. Already, a number of barrages are planned between Faraka and Allahabad to make the 1,620 km length of the river navigable from Haldia to Allahabad under National Waterway 1 project which can be extended up the Kanpur. Topic. Statistics. A 2006 measurement of pollution in the Ganges revealed that river water monitoring over the previous 12 years had demonstrated fecal coliform counts up to 100 million mpn most probable number per 100 milliliters and biological oxygen demand levels averaging over 40 mg l in the most polluted part of the river in Varanasi. The overall rate of water-borne, enteric disease incidence, including acute gastrointestinal disease, was estimated to be about 66%. A systematic classification done by Uttarakhand Environment Protection and Pollution Control Boards UEPPCB, on river waters into the categories of safe for drinking, B, safe for bathing, C, safe for agriculture, and D, excessive pollution, put the Ganges in D. Coliform bacteria levels in the Ganges have also been tested tested to be at 5,500, a level too high to be safe for agricultural use let alone drinking and bathing. The leather industry in Kanpur which employs around 50,000 people in more than 400 tanneries uses chemicals such as toxic chromium compounds. Effectively, chromium levels have not decreased in the Ganges even after a common treatment plant was established in 1995. It now stands at more than 70 times the recommended maximum level. A study conducted by the National Cancer Registry Program (NCRP) under the Indian Council of Medical Research in 2012 suggested that 
Those living along its banks in Uttar Pradesh, Bihar and Bengal are more prone to cancer than anywhere else in the country. Topic. Effect Topic. Marine life The results of mercury analysis in various specimens collected along the basin indicated that some fish mussels tended to accumulate high levels of mercury. Of it, approximately 50 to 84 percent was organic mercury. A strong positive correlation between mercury levels in mussel with food habit and fish length was found. The Ganges River dolphin is one of few species of freshwater dolphins in the world. Listed as an endangered species, their population is believed to be less than 2,000. Hydroelectric and irrigation dams along the Ganges that prevents the dolphins from traveling up and down river is the main reason for their reducing population. The Ganges softshell turtle Nilsonia gangetica, is found in the Ganges, Indus, and Mahanadi river systems of Pakistan, northern India, Bangladesh, and southern Nepal. This turtle inhabits deep rivers, streams, large canals, lakes and ponds, with a bed of mud or sand. According to the International Union for Conservation of Nature, freshwater turtle species are vulnerable. Due to their long lifespan and high trophic level in the aquatic food web, turtles are vulnerable to heavy metals pollution, a major kind of pollution in the Ganges. Topic. Wildlife Some of the dams being constructed along the Ganges Basin will submerge substantial areas of nearby forest. For example, the Kotli Bhel Dam at Devprayag will submerge 1,200 hectares of forest, wiping out the forest area. Topic. Human beings An analysis of the Ganges water in 2006 and 2007 showed significant associations between waterborne, enteric disease and the use of the river for bathing, laundry, washing, eating, cleaning utensils, and brushing teeth. Water in the Ganges has been correlated to contracting dysentery, cholera, hepatitis, as well as severe diarrhea which continues to be one of the leading causes of death of children in India. During the summer and monsoon, hospital wards team with children who need treatment for waterborne diseases, but according to S.C. Singh, a pediatrician at Varanasi Shiv Prasad Gupta Hospital, their parents rarely mention that they have been swimming in the river. They don't appear to have made the connection, he says. Topic. Cleanup efforts Topic. Ganga Mahasabha Ganga Mahasabha is an Indian organization dedicated to the Ganges, founded by Maiden Mohan Malviya in 1905. After a long struggle, British India agreed on 5 November 1914 that the uninterrupted flow of the Ganges is the rudimentary right of Hindu believers. The day is known as a, a viral Ganga Samjauta Divas uninterrupted Ganga Flow Agreement Day in the history of India and the agreement came into existence on 19 December 1916 which is known as Agreement of 1916. The sanctity of the agreement is not preserved by the state and central governments of India after independence though it is legally valid. More and more river water is diverted for irrigation use converting the river into a polluted sewer. Topic. Ganges Action Plan The Ganges Action Plan GAP, was launched by Rajiv Gandhi, the then Prime Minister of India, on June 1986 with covering 25 Class 1 towns 6 in Uttar Pradesh, 4 in Bihar and 15 in West Bengal, 862.59 crore rupees were spent. Its main objective was to improve the water quality by the interception, diversion and treatment of domestic sewage and to prevent toxic and industrial chemical wastes from identified polluting units from entering the river. 
The other objectives of the GAP are as follows. Control of non-point pollution from agricultural runoff, human defecation, cattle wallowing and the disposal of human remains in the river. Research and development to conserve the biotic diversity of the river to augment its productivity. Development of sewage treatment technology such as upflow anaerobic sludge blanket UASB, and sewage treatment through afforestation. Rehabilitation of soft-shelled turtles for pollution abatement. Resource recovery options such as methane production for energy generation and use of aquaculture for revenue generation. To act as trend setter for taking up similar action plans in other grossly polluted stretches in other rivers. The ultimate objective of the GAP is to have an approach of integrated river basin management considering the various dynamic interactions between abiotic and biotic ecosystem, notwithstanding some delay in the completion of the first phase of the GAP it has generated considerable interest and set the scene for evolving a national approach towards replicating this program for the other polluted rivers of the country. The Government of India proposed to extend this model with suitable modifications to the national level through a National River Action Plan NRAP. The NRAP mainly draws upon the lessons learnt and the experience gained from the gap besides seeking the views of the state governments and the other concerned departments, agencies. Under NRCP scheme the CPCB had conducted river basin studies and had identified 19 gross polluted stretches and 14 less polluted stretches along 19 rivers, which include 11 stretches situated along 7 rivers of MP. It was much more effective as compared to the previous launched programs. Phase 2 covered 59 towns in 5 states, 505.31 crore rupees were spent. Rivers such as Yamuna, Gamti, Damodar, Mahananda had separate action plans. Topic: National River Ganga Basin Authority (NRGBA). NRGBA was established by the Central Government of India on the 20th of February 2009 under Section 3 of the Environment Protection Act 1986. It declared the Ganges as the national river of India. The chair includes the Prime Minister of India and chief ministers of states through which the Ganges flows. In 2011, the World Bank approved 1 billion dollars in funding for the National Ganges River Basin Authority. Topic. 2010 Government Cleanup Campaign In 2010, it was announced that the Indian government has embarked on a $4 billion campaign to ensure that by 2020 no untreated municipal sewage or industrial runoff enters the 1,560-mile river. A World Bank spokesman described the plan in 2011, saying, Earlier efforts to clean the Ganga concentrated on a few highly polluting towns and centers and addressed end of the pipe wastewater treatment there. Mission Clean Ganga builds on lessons from the past, and will look at the entire Gangetic Basin while planning and prioritizing investment instead of the earlier town-centric approach. Lobby Group Sankat Mochan Foundation SMF is working with GO2 Water Inc., a Berkeley, California, wastewater technology company. To design a new sewage treatment system for Varanasi, the Supreme Court of India has been working on the closure and relocation of many of the industrial plants like Tulsi along the Ganges. In 2010 the government declared the stretch of river between Gamak and Uttarkashi an eco-sensitive zone. Topic Namami Gange program in the budget tabled in Parliament on 10 July 2014, the Union Finance Minister Arun Jaitley announced an integrated Ganges development project titled Namami Gange, meaning, obeisance to the Ganges River, and allocated 2,037 crore rupees for this purpose. The objectives were effective abatement of pollution, conservation, and rejuvenation of the Ganga. Under the project, eight states are covered. Department of Drinking Water Supply and Sanitation proposes to make 1,674 gram panchayats by the Ganga open defecation free by 2022, at a cost of 1,700 crore rupees central share. 
an estimated 2958 crore rupees 460 million dollars have been spent till July 2016 in various efforts in cleaning up of the river as a part of the program government of india ordered the shutdown of 48 industrial units around the ganges the program has a budget outlay of 20000 crore rupees for the next 5 years this is a significant four-fold increase over the expenditure in the past 30 years. Government of India incurred an overall expenditure of approximately 4000 crore rupees on this task since 1985. The center will now take over 100% funding of various activities, projects under this program. Taking a leave from the unsatisfactory results of the earlier Ganges action plans, the center now plans to provide for operation and maintenance of the assets for a minimum 10-year period, and adopt a PPP, SPV approach for pollution hotspots. In an attempt to bolster enforcement the center also plans to establish a 4-battalion Ganga Eco Task Force. The program emphasizes on improved coordination mechanisms between various ministries, agencies of central and state governments. Major infrastructure investments which fall under the original mandate of other ministries viz. Urban Development UD, Drinking Water and Sanitation DWS, Environment Forests and Climate Change EF and CC, etc., will be undertaken in addition. Namami Gange will focus on pollution abatement interventions namely interception, diversion and treatment of wastewater flowing through the open drains through bioremediation, appropriate in situ treatment, use of innovative technologies, sewage treatment plants STPs, effluent treatment plant ETPs, rehabilitation and augmentation of existing STPs and immediate short-term measures for arresting pollution at exit points on riverfront to prevent inflow of sewage etc. Significantly the approach is underpinned by socio-economic benefits that the program is expected to deliver in terms of job creation, improved livelihoods and health benefits to the vast population that is dependent on the river. The main pillars of Namami Gange program are, sewerage treatment infrastructure riverfront development river surface cleaning biodiversity afforestation public awareness industrial effluent monitoring Ganga Gramit's implementation has been divided into entry-level activities for immediate visible impact, medium-term activities to be implemented within five years of time frame and long-term activities to be implemented within ten years. Topic. Ganga Manthan Ganga Manthan was a national conference held to discuss issues and possible solutions for cleaning the river. The conference aimed to take feedback from stakeholders and prepare a road map for rejuvenating the Ganga. The event was organized by the National Mission for Clean Ganga NMCG on 7 July 2014 at Vigyan Bhawan in New Delhi, Nepal to release water during lean flow period. Nepal has constructed many barrages excluding joint projects with India or pump houses to divert the lean season river flows for irrigation purpose. These water diversion projects are located near 28 degrees 25 minutes 29 seconds north 81 degrees 22 minutes 49 seconds east, 28 degrees 02, 24, and 81 degrees 57 minutes 12 seconds east, 27 degrees 52 minutes 51 seconds north 82 degrees 30 minutes 13 seconds east, 27 degrees 40, 00, and 83 degrees 06, 49, e, 27 degrees 40 2 minutes 17 seconds north 84 degrees 25 minutes 57 seconds east 27 degrees 08 11 and 85 degrees 29 01 e 26 degrees 53 09 and 86 degrees 08 13 e 26 degrees 50 minutes 13 seconds north 87 degrees 09 01 e 26 degrees 41 05 and 87 degrees 52 minutes 43 seconds east etc India being lower riparian state has right to claim share out of the river water flows from Nepal similar to India entered into river water sharing agreement with Bangladesh recognizing it as lower riparian state. Till now there is no bilateral agreement between India and Nepal adhering to equitable sharing of river waters during the lean season. When Nepal releases water into India during the lean flow period, it would help in cleaning, diluting the polluted waters of downstream Ganga River up to Faraka Barrage. 
Water diversion from Manasarovar Lake. For restoring the minimum environmental flows, it is difficult to identify nearly 100 TMCFT storage reservoirs in the hilly region of Ganga Basin in India as the river is flowing through steep valleys. Already big storage reservoirs like Terry and Ramganga are constructed at feasible locations. However the water of Manasarovar Lake located in China can be diverted to the upstream of Kanpur Barrage 117 meters MSL via Garijapur Barrage 129 meters MSL located at 28 degrees 16 minutes 21 seconds north 81 degrees 05 09 E across the Gagara, Karnali River which is a tributary of Ganga River flowing from Tibet, China and Nepal. Manasarovar Lake's surface area is 320 square kilometers. 120 square miles, and its maximum depth is 90 meters 300 feet. It holds more than 100 TMCFT water in its top 13 meters depth. At present it is overflowing into nearby Lake Rikshastal which is a landlocked saltwater endoric lake. The annual water inflows from the catchment area of Manasarovar Lake located at 4,590 meters 15,060 feet above MSL, can be diverted by gravity to the Karnali River Basin of China through a 15-kilometer-long tunnel. The diverted water available continuously can be used in China for hydroelectric power generation where the head drop available is in excess of 800 meters over a 40-kilometers-long stretch. This would be a joint project of China, Nepal and India for controlling river water pollution and making the Ganga River live and flowing throughout the year. With the diversion of Manasarovar Lake water to Ganga Basin, Lake Rikshastal would turn into a soda lake with further increase in water salinity which is useful in abstracting the water-soluble chemicals on commercial scale. The fresh water inflows into Manasarovar Lake can be augmented further substantially by gravity diversion of the inflows available from the major catchment area of Rikshastal Lake to Manasarovar Lake by constructing an earth dam isolating northern tip of Rikshastal Lake where it is fed by its substantial catchment area and also connected to the Manasarovar Lake. Utilization of Ganga and Brahmaputra flood waters to fight pollution in all rivers of India. A freshwater coastal reservoir with massive storage capacity can be established on the shallow sea area adjoining West Bengal, Odisha and Bangladesh coast by constructing sea dikes, buns, causeway up to the depth of 20 meters. Water can be pumped from this artificial fresh water lagoon throughout the year with abundant hydro power resource of India to many river basins in India for meeting needs of agriculture, maintaining environmental flows, salt export requirements, etc. Nearly 360 billion cubic meters BCM storage capacity fresh water coastal reservoir, lagoon can be located on the sea area which stretches from coast of southeastern Bangladesh near 21 degrees 29 minutes 43 seconds north 91 degrees 52 09 e to the mouth of Brahmani River near 20 degrees 49 minutes 37 seconds north 86 degrees 57 minutes 57 seconds east. The dike would be envisaged with gated barrages to pass to the sea the excess flood waters total mean annual flow 1200 BCM received from the Ganga, Brahmaputra, etc. rivers for limiting the maximum reservoir level FRL to nearly 2.0 meters above MSL below local high tide level. From this coastal reservoir, water is pumped to Salandi Reservoir at 70 meters MSL near to 21 degrees 18 minutes 11 seconds north 86 degrees 17 minutes 41 one seconds east in the Brahmani River Basin for further transfer to basins of Damodar River, Subarnarika River, Brahmani River, Mahanadi River in Jharkhand, Odisha, Chhattisgarh and West Bengal states. The Hasdeo Bongo Reservoir near 22 degrees 36 minutes 47 seconds north 82 degrees 37 minutes 27 seconds east would receive the Ganga water via Hirakud Reservoir and further pumped into the Narmada, Son, Tapti, Yamuna, Chambal, Gagar, Ganga, etc. river basins for using in Maharashtra, Madhya Pradesh, Chhattisgarh, South Uttar Pradesh, South Bihar, Rajasthan, Gujarat, Haryana and Delhi states. See Google Earth Maps for more geographical information. Further, water can be pumped into the Bog Reservoir and Upper Indravati Reservoir located in Godavari River Basin to transfer Ganga water into Godavari and Krishna River Basins. 
The advantage of this scheme is that Ganga and Brahmaputra river waters can be stored on Bay of Bengal Sea area and nearly 540 BCM water at 17,000 cumex transferred throughout the year to other river basins including Ganga Basin at Optimum Pumping Head. Nearly 1,000 million tons 500 million cubic meters of sediment annually from Ganga and Brahmaputra rivers is settling in the sea coast of Bangladesh and India and the sea area is shallow up to 20 meters depth for 60 kilometers wide on average. Bangladesh plagued with high population density, can reclaim nearly 7,500 square kilometers 5% of its total land area of sea by excavating, dredging sediment from the fresh water lagoon bed without any effect on the water storage of the coastal reservoir. The presence of the protective sea dike makes sub-sea soil dredging easier and economical through protection from rough sea waves. This reclaimed area from the sea can be utilized for locating a megacity to cater to the modern needs of Bangladesh. This coastal dike would protect the Bangladesh from the wave and tidal activity during the frequent cyclones preventing human and property losses drastically and also from sea level rise due to global warming. Thus Bangladesh would also benefit immensely with this coastal reservoir project. The sea dike top level at 8 meters above the mean sea level and 50 meters wide at the top surface, would be nearly 600 kilometers long connecting Indian mainland to southeast of Bangladesh forming transnational highway and rail route from the Indian subcontinent to East Asia up to Singapore and China. Also this dike can be used as access way connecting deep sea ports located close to this dike. The proposed dike would be similar to the land reclamation of North Sea area called Delta Works in Netherlands. The experience of the Samangium seawall already constructed in South Korea which is 33 km long and with 36 m average depth, can be utilized for this project which is a lesser challenging project. Locks arrangement similar to Panama Canal would be provided for the movement of ships from the open sea to harbors located in Bangladesh and India. The offshore earth dam extending up to plus 8 mmsl height, is in the form of two parallel dikes separated by 1,000 meters gap. The main purpose of the twin dikes is to prevent any sea water seepage into coastal reservoir as its water level is below the sea level. The water level between the dikes is always maintained up to 1 meter above the sea level by pumping fresh water from the coastal reservoir to the 1,000 meters gap between the dikes. The higher level water barrier between the two dikes fully eliminate any sea water seepage into the coastal reservoir by establishing fresh water seepage to the sea. The 600 km long, 1000 m gap between the two dikes is also used as deep water mega harbor for shipping, ship breaking, ship building, etc. For shipping purpose, the breakwater outer dike facing the sea is envisaged with few locks fitted with twin gates for access to the open sea. The top surface of inner dike would serve as access to the mainland from the mega harbor with rail and road links. The coastal reservoir whose full reservoir water level FRL, is at 0.0 meters MSL, would also reduce drastically the cyclone damage and flooding in adjacent coastal areas. The cost of the total project including coastal reservoir, water pumping stations 60 gigawatts, canal drop hydro power stations 15 gigawatts, main canals, tunnels, aqueducts, barrages and distribution canals is estimated nearly 20 trillion lakh crores INR at year 2018 prices. Cheaper and continuously available hydro power will be supplied by harnessing the Indus, Jhelum and Chenab rivers for the water pumping needs. The irrigation potential of the project alone is 150 million acres with water supply throughout the year. It is a gigantic multi-purpose project where cleaning of many major rivers of India not Ganga River alone from the water pollution is one of its purpose. Topic. Clean Ganga Fund The Union Cabinet gave its approval for setting up of Clean Ganga Fund in September 2014 with the aim of using the collection for various activities under the Namami Gange program for cleaning the Ganga. Utilization of funds asterisk cleaning up of the Ganga asterisk setting up of waste treatment plants asterisk conservation of biotic diversity of the river 
asterisk development of public amenities, asterisk activities such as GOT redevelopment and research and development and innovative projects. Topic. National Mission for Clean Ganga The National Mission for Clean Ganga NMCG, is the implementation wing of National Ganga Council which was set up in October 2016 under the River Ganga Rejuvenation, Protection and Management Authorities Order 2016. The order dissolved National Ganga River Basin Authority. The aim is to clean the Ganga and its tributaries in a comprehensive manner. Nitin Gudkari is the present Minister for Ministry for Water Resources, River Development and Ganga Rejuvenation, Government of India. Topic. Protests for cleaning the Ganges Topic. Nigamanand In early 2011, a Hindu monk named Swami Nigamananda Saraswati fasted to death, protesting against pollutive riverbed quarrying of the Ganges happening in the district of Haridwar, Uttarakhand. Following his death in June 2011, his ashram leader Swami Shivananda fasted for 11 days starting on 25 November 2011, taking his movement forward. On 5 December 2011, the government of Uttarakhand released an order to ban riverbed mining in the Bhogpur and Bishanpur Ghats. According to administration officials, quarrying in the Ganga would now be studied by a special committee which would assess its environmental impacts on the river and its nearby areas. Topic. Professor G. D. Agrawal Dr. G. D. Agrawal was a notable environment activist and patron of Ganga Mahasabha, an organization founded by Maiden Mohan Malviya in 1905, demanding removal of dams on Ganga. Because of support from other social activists like Anna Hazare, the then Prime Minister of India, Manmohan Singh agreed to Professor Agrawal's demands. Accordingly, he called for a National River Ganga Basin Authority NRGBA meeting and urged the authorities to utilize the 26 billion rupees $520 million sanctioned for creating sewer networks, sewage treatment plants, sewage pumping stations, electric crematoria, community toilets and development of riverfronts. Dr. Agrawal died on the 11th of October 2018, after being on an indefinite fast since the 22nd of June 2018, demanding the government act on its promises to clean and save River Ganga. <laughs> See also